afternoon and happy Easter to you all. We are thrilled to have you with us this Easter day and even happier to have a standing room only crowd. It is, as Carter Gregory would say, a blessed problem to have. <laughs> we welcome Cardinal Gregory, who is the Archbishop of Washington and Chairman of the National Shrine Board of Trustees. We welcome as well our friends who join us at home through our live stream broadcast and the Eternal Word Television Network. May our Easter prayer uplift our hearts this day and fill us with the new life the resurrection brings. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather in joy along with the entire church to celebrate the great fact of the Father's raising the Son from dead. Let us ask the Father now to forgive our sins. I confess, oh, Almighty God, that to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, who on this day through your only begotten Son 
have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy and yours forever. Let the house of his say, His mercy and yours forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be The Lord has struck with power. 
The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb they both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and he believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Dearest brothers and sisters in Christ, I have encountered some of the most patient folks that I have ever met in my life here in the DMV, omitting, of course, drivers. Most folks here are well-mannered and long-suffering, but there is a limit even to their patience. We are all eager now for spring after a long winter that finally seems to have passed. We are willing to accept even those premature indications that spring has really arrived. Our spirits are lifted when the crocuses and the tulips start to appear, and Washingtonians chart the progress of the cherry blossoms more intensely than they do the lottery numbers. Most of us are even willing to endure the upsurge in the pollen count with its yellow residue that coats just about everything as the price we must pay for spring's arrival. We are anxious to believe even in the face of the slightest circumstantial evidence offered by precocious signs of nature that springtime, with its promise of new life, has really arrived. Mary Magdalene and the other disciples were equally anxious to believe that Jesus' promise of a resurrected life had in, indeed been fulfilled. A stone seal had been broken the sight of scattered burial cloths were enough to ignite their faith that Jesus was truly risen. What will it take 
to ignite our hearts. We live in an age that is far more skeptical and empirical than it is open to religious faith. Ours is a society with competing religious systems, which may offer the challenge of not believing at all. What will it take for you and me to believe that Christ is truly risen? Last evening, in churches throughout the archdiocese, hundreds of people joined the Catholic Church. In spite of national surveys, and the seemingly unending political and ecclesial scandals, in spite of the unsettled question, questions of sexism, racism, terrorism, and personal conflicts, countless hundreds, if not thousands of people with a sincere love in their heart for Christ and for our Catholic family of faith, which Christ commissioned to continue his presence in the world. Our church grew. Sophisticated adults who know life's score, along with precocious young people, were plunged into the waters of baptism and anointed with sacred oil and who feasted at the Lord's table for the first time last night. They are a sign for us that the spirit of Christ is still active in our world. They are the symbolic stone seals that have been broken, the burial garments cast about that today witness to Christ's resurrection. At this time, we all want to believe. We want to free our hearts from any chill that keeps them skeptical, from any pain that refuses to be healed. We want to believe more firmly that in the signs of faith that surround us and that whisper to us that Christ is truly risen. The church must point out those signs for men and women of our age, our new brothers and sisters in faith stand as a happy expression of the church's vitality. We too, older Catholics, middle-aged Catholics, we are called to be similar witnesses. We must run to the tomb, huffing and puffing because of age, or carefully walking with hopeful but still skeptical hearts to see those signs of the risen Christ's victory over death and the beginning of the of fullness of life for all of us. What will it take for us to believe? Perhaps just an invitation, a challenge, or a hopeful heart. May you and all of your loved ones find such signs of Christ's victory this Easter. And may your hearts and your homes be filled with the joy that faith both ignites and sustains. In my name and in the name of the entire Archdiocese of Washington, grown much richer today with our newest Catholics, I wish you and all of the many parish families throughout this local church and all who may be our guests or out of town visitors today a very happy Easter season. Those newest Catholics are a wonderful invitation to believe, and those of us who have been Catholic for many years are also asked to be witnesses of the resurrected Lord Jesus. God bless you. Happy Easter.
dearest sisters and brothers, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we might walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of our holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I now ask all of you, do you renounce Satan I do. and all his works I do. and all his empty promises? I do. do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
the joy of the resurrection renewed in our hearts, we now turn to our Heavenly Father and offer Him our needs and prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that God will strengthen him to be a faithful servant of the gospel and a voice of peace and hope in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our president, legislators, judges, and all those who serve to the common good, that through the gift of heavenly wisdom, they may never tire in their commitment to uphold religious freedom, the sanctity of marriage, and the dignity of all human life from the first moment of conception until natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will devote their lives in loving service to the poor, to immigrants and refugees, the marginalized, the sick and the elderly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the joyful celebration of the resurrection will inspire a deeper faith in all members of the church and encourage within them a desire to share that faith with others in the perennial mission of evangelization. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will recognize the gifts God has given them and be open to using those gifts and vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions that we hold in our hearts, as well as those enrolled in the National Shrine's Easter Novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may now share in the glory of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son's victory over sin and death has brought new hope and life to all creation. Hear our prayers on this holy day and lead us to share in the fullness of that new life in your eternal kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to use the envelopes provided in the pews or scan the QR code found in the worship leaflet or visit the National Shrine online as a means of sharing in our ministry at the Basilica of the National Shrine. Thank you for your continued support and generosity.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dared to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my life, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go oh, in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.